Okay, so let's pray together. <coughs> Our gracious Father, because of your love, we are here as brothers and sisters. We were sinners living in darkness without knowing any true hope. But you gave us this precious salvation so that we can go to heaven and we can join you and we can spend eternity with you. So Lord, even though we didn't deserve your love, you gave your son and you washed away all our sins so that you can be righteous before you. And you gave us the church, the body of Christ, so that we can be together, working together, being united for your glory. So Lord, thank you so much for being with us now in this place. Lord, we need your wisdom and strength to live as Christians. We need to know more of your love and your grace and your knowledge. So Lord, please help us this time so that we can understand your will from the scripture and we can live a holy and godly life as Christians. And there are brothers and sisters who are not here yet. Please bring them so that we can be together praising you and glorifying you. So from the beginning to the end, I commit the rest of time unto your mighty hand. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's open the Bible. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 22, the last chapter of the last book. Um, verse 12. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. Let's read it together. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I like to talk about the judgment seat of Christ today because there will be judgment for Christians after rapture. You know rapture? The whole church will be cut up into heaven and we will be with God forever and ever. And after that, God will judge each and every Christian according to their work. That's what uh, Jesus is saying here, verse 12. And behold, I am coming quickly. He promised he will come quickly. And my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. So let me ask you, when you hear about the judgment, do you like it? Or you say, oh, judgment again. You know, the test in the school was enough for me. But another test, you know, another judgment, I don't like it. Don't worry, actually. So that's why we, we want to, I want to study this judgment seat of Christ today. It's not about your mistake, actually. It's not about what you have done wrong. Actually. It's about your good work. God doesn't even remember your sins anymore, that's for sure. But God will reward, so that's why Jesus said, I will give you reward. My reward is me. Is with me. You know reward? Like a prize, right? Reward. Because God really appreciates what you have done in your life. Jesus said, I'm coming quickly. Why? Because I want to give a reward for all your work. Prize. The crown, right? All your work. I like this one, work. Work means work. Whatever you have done for God, God remembers. Work, right? But some people say, Pastor, I read in the Bible, the Pharisees, when they prayed like this to get the praises from people, Jesus said, um, you know, Jesus actually condemned them, right? Um, the work here, you have to remember. Uh, let me, let me uh, tell you one thing. Today, suppose, today, uh, this is the Lord's Day. You are supposed to come and be together. But in the morning, you are so tired and you are thinking, should I go or not? I want to take a rest. At least one day, you know. Six days I've been working and then one day I will just want to take a rest. But you are thinking, thinking, and then, ah, okay, whatever, I will go to the church. And you came. And you're thinking, oh, is it okay? Because uh, I didn't really come with, uh, like, a, uh, I didn't want, it, didn't want to come, but I just 
at the last minute I just made the decision to come, what do you think? It will count or not for the reward? It will. It will. What Jesus said about the Pharisees is their intention from the beginning was wrong. Like they wanted to help other people to get praises from people. So they already received all the praises from people. So no praises or reward left for them because they already got what they wanted. Right? But in this case, for example, you were struggling in the morning, but you just came anyway. God says, well done, actually. Well done. Okay, it's about work. Jesus said one time, a tree is known by its what? Fruit. Fruit. What is the fruit? As a Christian, work. I, I was thinking about this this whole week, and then I was thinking, yes, Truly, the evidence that we are Christians is shown through our work. Suppose you say, I love God, I'm Christian, I'm born again, but you never read the Bible, and you don't come to the church, you don't come to fellowship, and then you don't show any work for God. You know, it doesn't count. I don't think so, because how can you say something and then you do something else? That's why work, work is very clear. Work is very clear. Uh, so, you, if you do anything for God, God says, well done, right? My reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. So one day, one day God will say, okay, all my children come and let's see what you have done in your life. Again, I'm telling you, it's not to scold us or to, to rebuke us, it's to give us the reward, the prize. Because the judgment seat of Christ, the word, Bema, is about giving the prize, actually. Let's turn to Romans chapter 14. So this is what will happen after the rapture, when we stand before God. Of course, God will welcome us, and after that, uh, everything we have done will be counted by God. Romans chapter 14, verse 10, 10 to 13. Romans chapter 14, verse 10 to 13. Let's read it together. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God, so then each of us shall give account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather reserve this, not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. Okay. Apostle Paul is talking about judging others. Why you judge others? Why you judge others? If you judge others, it's a sin. And when you judge others, when you stand before God, and when, when, when you confess whatever you have done to God, there's no reward, actually. No reward. Okay? No prize. Right? So there will be judgment of our life, what we have done after salvation. Before salvation, it doesn't count. So when I talk about the judgment... First of all, some people say, I don't like judgment. Why God judges us? Because God is God of justice. And there's another reason, actually. When you hear you will be judged, you don't like it. But sometimes in your life, you want justice. Let me give you an example. Suppose someone beat you without any reason, right? Then you want justice, actually. Uh, it happened to me, not me, but um, when I was in high school, me and our friends was walking on the street. I still remember because it was so shocking. There was one man um, coming toward us, and as he approached us, he just hit one of my friends in his face like this, and just keep going. <laughs> it was so shocking, right? We don't we have no idea who he was, and why he did, and what happened. 
No way. That's why I still remember, right? You're just walking, keep walking on the street. And somebody approaches you and hit you pretty hard and just go away. What would you do? Is it okay? You would feel very bad and you want to catch him. By the way, I, I was just shocked there and then my friend was chasing him, actually, right? Um, suppose somebody hurt your father and mother or your loved ones, right? Your dear friends. You want justice, actually. You want justice. You say, where's justice? That person cannot just get away, right? We all know, because we have a conscience, there should be justice. And those who really worked hard for God, like a, a Pastor Paul, they would say, I spent a whole my life for the Lord, right? They should be rewarded, right? That's true. We know from our conscience that there should be justice. So, the day will come. Verse 11, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me. Uh, after the rapture, remember Revelation chapter 1, Apostle John saw Jesus in his glory. He fell down. He fell down because his eyes were like a flames, burning, burning flames, Jesus' eyes. And from his mouth, a sharp sword coming out. And Revelation chapter um, 19, we know that um, at the end of the millennium kingdom, Jesus will come and judge Satan and his followers with a sword coming out of his mouth. And every knee shall bow before him, actually. Because he is the king of kings, lord of lords. It's interesting. It's interesting. Those who treat Jesus as king of kings now, yeah, okay. Right? We love him. He is our brother. He is our friend. Jesus said he is our brother and friend, right? And when we see Jesus, that's what will happen after with our salvation, we have become his friend. So Jesus will treat us with his friend, right? Welcome. And we are the bride of Jesus Christ. But those who hated Jesus, those who didn't like Jesus, they say, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to hear about Jesus. They'll be treated as enemy of Jesus, enemy, right? Even Apostle Paul, who was very close to Jesus, when he saw the true, uh, the glory of Jesus, he fell down and he was like a dead man. Why? The glory was beyond our imagination. Let's remember, there's a judgment in the Bible again and again. God judged Adam and Eve for eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Remember. You know, that judgment was fair because that was only one tree. God provided everything. And Adam was so intelligent, by the way. He knew exactly what it meant by eating, the, eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It was disobedience. It was like saying, God, I don't want you to, to be my life. I want to be on my own. Don't bother with me. And that's why he ate, actually. And that's why... He was cast out of the Garden of Eden because uh, he couldn't be there because he wanted to be God for himself. Right? And there was uh, Noah's flood and there was, uh, again, you have to remember the judgment inflicted on Jesus Christ on the cross. Do you, do you remember how Jesus died? Do you remember how God judged Jesus on the cross? Why? Because God is just. He even killed his own son in that terrible way to save us. Save us. God is just. Our God is just God. He is very fair. The one word I hear again and again from the children, the little children is, they say, it's unfair. Do you know, do you know that? They play with a toy, right? And they fight over toy. So mother say, oh, give it to your brother. You know, then the other one says, is unfair. <laughs> Why? He spent more time with the toy. It's my turn. So unfair. So we, we have this, uh, you know, we know there should be justice, actually. So, um, finally, when Jesus comes again, everything will be settled. Don't worry. You know, sometimes, do you know that some people hate me for no reason, right? We are mistreated and then so many unfair things happening in this world. Don't worry. When Jesus comes, 
He will settle everything in the perfect way. Fair way, right? So here, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. And then, so then, each of us shall give account of himself to God. The day will come when we will give account of our life, whole account, from the day of salvation to the day when we stand before God. Verse 13, let's read it together. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather reserve this, not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. Therefore means, since you know there will be judgment, therefore, what does that mean? We have to remember there will be the judgment, seat of Christ. For uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Let's read it together. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. All means everyone. No exception. All appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That each one, underline each one. Each one means is an individual judgment. Individual means um, it's not a group prize. Even though we are together in this church. It doesn't mean that God will judge the whole church. God will judge each one individually. Um, suppose a husband or wife is a very faithful Christian. doesn't matter. Uh, it's about you. Of course, you can help each other in this life, but the judgment itself will be for each individual. Uh, so you, 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 each one may receive the things done in the body. Again, work. What, what has been done in the body? What did you do with your body? Did you praise God? You know, did you read the Bible? Did you memorize the memory verse? Or did you help the other brother, sister? Did you, did you work hard and then made money and then you, you used that money wisely to, for the preaching the gospel or uh, for expanding the kingdom of God or to help the poor brother, sisters? Whatever has been done in the body. One time Jesus said, even if you give a glass of water to the little one, I will remember, right? So remember all the work, all the work. Don't say, I was thinking about it. I didn't do that. It doesn't count, okay? The Bible makes it clear, the work, what's been done in your body. So whatever you do, right? I was thinking about this, and it's really important. Truly, the evidence of your faith is the work you do in your life, actually. How do you know? Suppose you say, I'm truly a Christian. Right? I'm born again. But your life doesn't show it, actually. No. The way you are spending your time is always, you just live for your, yourself, not glorifying God, not even think about, you know, what, how we can please God and doing nothing. Just keep talking that, you know, I'm, I'm a born again Christian. So that's why the Bible again and again said, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. And this judgment seat of Christ in original Greek language is Bema. Bema, B-E-M-A. Write it down, B-E-M-A. Because... Uh, some confusion arises about this uh, Bema judgment. The Bema is about the reward, not rebuking or not like uh, punishing. It's not about punishment. All the punishment for our sins was already took, taken away by Jesus Christ. So after salvation, no matter what mistake you make or no matter what sin you commit, God doesn't even remember. Please, 
No? Don't be afraid of the mistake you make. Because Jesus already shed his blood to wipe away, wash away all your sins. So it's not about the punishment. It's about reward or prize. Okay? So Bema, you think about the Olympic Games. There's a, a platform, right? The gold medalist, the silver and bronze medalist, they stand, right? And then the, the medal is given to them. That is Bema. That is Bema. Okay? So what happens in the judgment seat of Christ is, it's not about, Jesus would not ask you uh, why you lied or why you hated the brother. Not like that. Okay? It's not like that. It is about prize, glory, actually. So, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Jesus, uh, the, the scripture explains very clearly what will happen in the judgment seat of Christ. Let's turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, um, verse 10. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. 10 to 13. 10 to 13. Let's read it together. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid a foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. Okay, first of all, we need a foundation. Foundation. Do you know foundation? Before you uh, build a house, you need a foundation. When I was in India, I came to know about foundation because I never seen the people building the house from the beginning, actually. Foundation, they put the cement, right? The cement on the, on the ground before they build a house because without foundation, it, it can collapse, actually. And they put a lot of cement, I saw. It is expensive, the foundation. Actually, foundation means you know, we have to have this, uh, this firm foundation to start building. So foundation was given to you already. What is foundation? Jesus Christ and our salvation. So there's no other foundation. There are people who hasn't received salvation, but they think they have the foundation. Um, they're mistaken, you know. We have to remember the blood of Jesus Christ. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, there's no salvation. The forgiveness of our sins, right? And um, verse 12, Now if anyone builds on this foundation, so imagine, imagine, after salvation, right after salvation, you start doing what? Building, the building. You are building. You are the builder. So even though we cannot see right now, each one of you, you are building your own building now. Okay? I don't know. I cannot see. I cannot see what you built so far. After, the, from the time of your salvation on, until now, you think about what you have been building. You know? We have to build a world. Actually, you, put, you have to put a pillar first. Pillar. Pillar. Because pillars should be there to support the whole house, right? And then you have to put the wall, you have to put the window and door and roof. Can you imagine? When we stand before God, we'll see exactly what kind of building we have been building, right? And some brother, sister, including me, maybe, right? I'm a pastor and then people respect me now, but when I stand before God, my building was so, not so good. <laughs> it's like a half built. This part is, uh, you know, collapsing and this part not maintained well. I don't know. What I'm saying is the day will show, the day. So here, um, verse 12, 
if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, gold, silver, precious stone, what does that mean? Whatever precious thing in your life, you use it to build a building. The precious thing. What is precious to you? Time? Time is gold. Time is precious. So you spend time for the Lord. And also money, okay? Or your talent, ability. You have some ability, right? Right? Like uh, you can sing well, so you can lead the songs, right? Like a talent. <laughs> or many things are there actually, right? So gold, silver, precious stone means you put so many precious things in your life for the Lord, like, you know, Jim Elliot, the missionary who went to Ecuador with uh, four more missionaries. Right after they landed in Ecuador, they were killed, right? So they gave their life, life. I still remember the movie, right? Uh, he was talking to his son. So the son, was it daughter or son? My memory. <laughs> he said, uh, there are people out there who are going to hell. We have to go and help them, right? And they took off airplane and when they landed they all died instantly actually they gave lives lives the precious thing but some people they just use wood hay straw means that like uh, you know tithe we are supposed to give the 10% of income which means that everything is belongs to God but some brother sister after spending all the money if there's anything left a little bit they give like uh, the last uh, the useless thing right but some brother sister they take the the tithe in the beginning right after they receive the like a payment they give the tithe first so anyway what happens is verse 13 verse 13 let's read verse 13 together each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. The fire will test your work, not you. It's important. The fire doesn't test us, which means we don't go through fire. I'm telling you again. It's about reward. It's not about punishment. Okay? Some people teach that we will be go through fire. No, not we. Our work. So you will see the fire will test your work, whatever you have done. So some people, verse 14, if anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a what? Reward. Verse 14. Wow. I'm, I'm thinking about this again and again. So you see, your work is there. So your work goes through fire, and then you will see what is left, right? Some brother, sister, like a brother, the apostle Paul, he still have a wonderful house left, right? Because uh, he was plan he planted so many churches, and then he was uh, saving so many souls, and then one time he was a uh, you know stoned. He almost died. People who stoned them. They thought he was dead. They went away and he got up. He went to the city again to preach again, right? So all his work and sacrifice and then his uh, work still remains because they are so precious. But what if after the fire is gone, you see nothing left, only the ashes. You know ashes? You cannot take the ashes and give to Jesus. Jesus, this I give you, give, give this to you. Ashes. When all other brothers, sisters are bringing the gold and silver and everything, she just look at this. This is what I have done. And then those who you have to be saved, they say, yes, Jesus, this brother, this sister was preaching gospel to me. Without him, I wouldn't be here like that, right? So we are rejoicing together. And then you are over there. You are looking at the ashes. Oh, look at this. Nothing is there, right? That is the judgment, actually. So I'm telling you again, 
Jesus will not rebuke or scold or punish you for your sin. Okay? The sin is gone, but it is about what you have done. Right? Verse 15. Let's read it together. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Don't worry about your salvation. No matter what you do after salvation, he himself will be saved. That's guaranteed. But your work might be burned and you suffer loss. Loss means you will lose the reward. You had a chance. You had a chance, but nothing left. So, our Christian life is a race. You know race? We have to run, actually. Let's turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. 9, 24. Let's read it together, 9, 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run? But one received the prize, run in such a way that you may obtain it. Uh, the reward will give will not only given to one person, but many, actually. But what Apostle Paul said is, run in such a way. Such a way means, as if there's only one prize, do your best. Keep running. Keep running. Right? Keep running. Because there's a prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. You may obtain it. Moses, he was living in the palace, enjoying the life, but he was not satisfied because he knew there is a life after death. And when he wanted to have reward, that's why he left his position as a prince, and he followed God, suffering so much in the wilderness, now, what do you think? He's rewarded or not? He has been rewarded a lot. Right? Verse 25, And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Temperate, what does that mean? The English word temperate means uh, you do not enjoy whatever you want. Temperate means um, like uh, you just uh, you are not Doing whatever you want, but uh, can I say temperate? Everyone who competes for the prize is temperate. I cannot think about another word. Temperate. Eh? Endurance. Okay. Like uh, you endure. Anyway. So temperate means like uh, one day when I was in the Seoul Central Church, I met one sister. She was an athlete. Athlete, national, national uh, athlete. Anyway, uh, so she was very good in wrestling. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> again, my memory. And she said, whole week she is training on the training, and she has only two hours free time, whole week, one week. So I said, how can you live like that? She said, oh, we are uh, on the training. We all do that. Only two hour free. Time. Other than that, there's a schedule. We have to get up very early in the morning and then do exercise and then all kinds of things until we go to bed. It's all scheduled, except the two hours a week is for us like that. That that means temperate, temperate. Okay, so you endure all the exercise and all these things. Why? Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Verse 25, right? Apostle Paul says, these athletes, the only thing they get later is a perishable crown. Means that it will you know, become nothing later. When we go to heaven, we cannot take the crown, the physical crown, right? But for us, imperishable eternal crown is waiting for us. Verse 26, let's read it together. Therefore, I run thus, not with uncertainty, Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. When you fight, you have to beat the, uh, your enemy, the other one, not the air. Okay? If you keep beating the air, you know, you just, it's, it doesn't work that way, right? You'll be beaten and then you'll collapse. you lose. This is about boxing, actually, right? 
So let's remember, we are all in the race, and there's a prize, and then there's an imperishable crown waiting for us. That's why we have to do our best in our Christian life. So let me tell you, when, when, when that judgment seat of Christ happened, let's turn to Luke chapter 14, verse 14. Luke chapter 14, verse 14. Luke 14, 14. Uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. 13 and 14, two verses. Uh, let's read it together. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just. So when you do something good for others, you help the people who cannot repay you, means that those who are poor, those who are miserable people. Because, verse 14, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just. What does that mean? First, there will be resurrection, right? The resurrection of the just, rapture. There will be re resurrection actually two times, precisely speaking. First, the first resurrection will be there in the time of rapture when we all go to heaven, right? The people who are in the grave, they shall be changed first, and then we who are still alive will be transformed. That's the rapture, that's resurrection. And second time, the rapture will happen, uh, no, the resurrection will happen at the end of seven year tribulation because there will be 144,000 Jewish people who who will be saved during the seven year tribulation, but they will be martyred, martyred, they'll be killed by the Antichrist during the second half of the seven year tribulation. So they are all will be dead, right? And then they'll be resurrected at the end of seven year tribulation when Jesus comes to this earth to, to rule during the millennium kingdom. Anyway, there will be resurrection of the just. So after the rapture, after the resurrection of the church, there will be judgment seat of Christ. Because here Jesus said, For you shall be repaid, repaid at the resurrection of the just. So there will be resurrection first, and then right after that, the judgment seat of Christ. And let's turn to uh, Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19, verse 8, uh, 7 and 8. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 and 8. 7 and 8. Let's read it together. Let us be glad and rejoice and give Him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and His wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saint. You know, this, about, this is about the marriage of the Lamb. So after the rapture, when we are in heaven with Jesus, there will be the judgment seat of Christ first, and then there will be the wedding, marriage. How do you know? In verse 8, And to her, to the church, it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen. Fine linen. Very bright robe, right? Clean and bright, for the fine linen is the what? Righteous acts of the saint. Righteous acts. Whatever you have done for God, the righteous acts, God will give those who work very hard the fine linen. Very glorious one, right? So we know this marriage will happen after the judgment. Because they, they already received this fine linen also as the result of their Righteous act. So let me explain again. There will be rapture, which we are waiting eagerly to see Jesus. And then in heaven, first there will be judgment seat of Christ. What is the Greek word for that? Bema. Bema. Bema, Bema judgment will be there. And there will be reward distributed. And then there will be the marriage of the Lamb marriage. 
marriage shows that how much Jesus loves us, actually, right? We are the bride. Like a you know, wedding day, you see the uh, bride and bridegroom. Are they happy or are they uh, sad? Uh, of course, I saw some, some uh, bride is crying. <laughs> Uh, not because they are sad, but because uh, you know, somehow they, when they see their parents, right? Uh, whatever they have done so far. Anyway, Jesus loves us so much, right? That's why there will be wedding, uh, so that we can be together forever and ever. As a Christian, we always should remember the glorious day, the day, the day. I told you last week, right? The Christians in Thessalonian church, they were waiting for the coming of Jesus Christ because they were persecuted so much. When our life is comfortable and when we enjoy, we say, Jesus, please come later. No, there's so many things to do, so many things to enjoy. And that somehow shows that you are very close to the world. World. Okay. When we are really live a godly life, there'll be persecution. When we try to invite someone to the seminar, they just, um, you know, they ignore us. Uh, sometimes they say bad things about us. We suffer. Then we, we, we say, Jesus, please come so that you know, we can be together. So, um, there'll be the judgment seat of Christ. So from now on, let me just tell you um, what kind of things will be judged because uh, the Bible says there many things will be judged for us. Um, so before the test, before the test, sometimes the teacher sh- says this will be in the test, right? This will be in the test. Then do you study it or not? You study Right? Because you know there will be tests and then it will be on the test. Just like that, some things are there in the Bible. Um, Jesus and the scripture made it clear that uh, what kind of judgment it will be. What, what is important you know, in our Christian life, we have to know. Okay? So first of all, we have to, we'll be judged about how we treated other brothers and sisters how we treated all the brothers and sisters. Um, let's turn to um, second, ah, Matthew chapter 10. Sorry, Matthew chapter 10. Verse 41 and 42. Matthew chapter 10, verse 41 and 42. Let's read it together. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. When we are in the church, we love brothers and sisters. Not because they are lovely, actually. But because they have Christ in their heart. Right? And then, remember, in verse 41, when you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you shall receive a prophet's reward. We have many missionaries. Right? When you pray for the missionary, and when you even uh, support them financially, you know, these missionaries, I'm quite sure you receive the reward of a missionary, actually. Even though you are not a missionary. That's for sure. That's what Jesus said, right? And if you give a glass of cold water to this little one, Jesus said, assuredly, he said, assuredly I say to you, means he shall by no means lose his reward. I'll remember it. So, let's remember how we treat the brothers and sisters, you know, when we help each other, when we pray for each other. Sometimes sisters prepare the lunch for us, right? All these things will be rewarded. And secondly, uh, we'll be judged about how we used our, the gift God gave us, the ability, the gift, talent, right? So, 
after we are born again, salvation, we know each and everyone has a gift. We all have a gift. Because that's the promise. Right? Uh, let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Let's read it together. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. As each one, there's no exception, each one has received a gift. Gift. What kind of gift? There are many kinds of gift. Right? Uh, let's turn to Romans chapter 12. I will show you some gift. Romans. Chapter 12, verse 6 to 8. Romans, chapter 12, verse 6 to 8. Let me read. Romans, chapter 12, verse 6 to 8. Having then gifts, differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. So, according to the grace of God, we are given gift. Let us use them. If we prophesy, prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Prophecy means like preaching. Preaching or teaching the Bible. Uh, because there are many prophecies in the Bible too. So it's like a preaching. Verse 7. Uh, or ministry. Let us use it in our ministering. Ministering means serving one another. Ministering. Like a cleaning the room or cooking. And then we can minister to each other. Minister. This is common. You know, you can clean. Some people say, I have no gift. I cannot do anything well. It's okay, you can clean. Okay? You can clean, and then you can arrange the chairs, and then you can help. And then uh, he who teaches in teaching, verse A, he who exhorts in exhortation. You know what ex exhortation means? Some brother, sister, they, are, they need some help. Help, and they need some wisdom. Then you, you can somehow share your testimony or you can encourage them. Exhortation. Okay? Exhortation. You can encourage them. You can uh, share your testimony. That's exhortation. He who gives, he who gives, verse 8, he who gives with liberality. Wow. Giving is also a gift. Because I know some brothers, sisters, they are really, they, 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 uh, they want to give more and more. There are, there are giving people. Do you know that? There are people who want to give more and more. It's in their nature. When they have something they want to give, they want to share. Right? So it's a gift too. Nice gift. Right? So he who gives with liberality means liberally. No. Just give it liberally without uh, thinking too much. Right? He who leads with diligence. There are leaders in the church. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. You have to show mercy to one another. Even this is also a gift. Showing mercy. Forgiving others. Forgiving others. Showing mercy. That is also a gift. We have uh, so many kinds of gift, actually. Right? So, God will judge us and ask us, what, how did you use the gift I gave you? Right? If you can sing well, you can join the cho uh, choir and you can sing. Right? No. We have a brother who can play the keyboard. Right? So that's the gift. So we have to use our gift for the glory of God. Number three, what about the money we have? You know, money or so. This will be judged too. Don't think that uh, you can make a lot of money because you are smart or you are able, actually. When I was in India, I was thinking this uh, a lot, actually. We are born in Korea and we are enjoying many things. It's God's grace. Okay? If you are smart and if you have a good job, it's also by God's grace. Isn't it? You could have been born in a very poor country, suffering. But God gave you a chance to, to live in, in this place, 
right? So everything is by God's grace. So we have to give back to God, right? Surely, surely, uh, it will be judged that um, actually, when we see some people uh, how, where they spend their money, it shows their their heart, actually, right? Uh, you think about where you think about which area you are spending most of money. That's where your heart is. Okay. So if you really love God, you'll spend even your money and all this material for the glory of God, right? So um, let's turn to First uh, Corinthians chapter sixteen. First Corinthians chapter sixteen. First Corinthians chapter sixteen. Verse 1 and 2. Let's read it together. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. And the early churches, they helped each other. Apostle Paul is talking about the Jerusalem church. In Jerusalem, there was a famine and there was a really difficult time for brothers and sisters in Jerusalem. So the churches were collecting money. So this collection, this collection for the saints means they were helping one another, actually, right? Let's remember, we, we belong to God, actually. Whatever we own is from God. Tithe, tithe. Tithe doesn't mean that only 10% is God's, 90% is mine. No. Tithe shows that 100% is God's. So as a token of acknowledging that everything is, belongs to God, we give tithe. So without tithe, you, you haven't really started the Christian life, actually, because where your money is, that's where your heart is, right? And number four, how we spend our time. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians. Chapter 5, verse 6. Uh, 16. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16. 5, 16. Let's read it together. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. What does that mean? Redeeming the time. Redeem means save. Save the time. Why? If we do not save the time, it will be just spent, it will be wasted. Wasted. So we have to redeem the time. We have to use it wisely. Right? Um, each one has 168 hours a week. Maybe we don't, uh, our financial conditions might be different, but for each one of us, God gave us the same amount of time 168 hours of time. Right? Do you know that you have to give the tithe of your time too? 10% of time belongs to God, just like money. Then 16, almost 17 hours a week belongs to God. That's why we come to church on Sunday and Wednesday and then some other time to spend and work together. We have a 604,800 seconds a, a, a week. Okay, 604,800 seconds. Everyone gives, uh, receives the same amount of time. And God will ask you, surely, how did you spend your time? Right? Also, when we are standing before the judgment seat of Christ, um, we'll be judged according to how much we suffer for the Lord, actually. Again, I'm telling you, it's a reward. So for, for those who suffer so much for the Lord, there will be more reward, right? So let's turn to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 11 and 12. Matthew chapter 5, verse 11 and 12. Let's read it together. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you. 
and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Being persecuted for the Lord really shows your heart, actually. Right? You suffer. You suffer for the Lord. We have almost 170 missionaries from our church in all over the place. And I really pray for them because they are the ones who choose. They chose to suffer. They chose to suffer. Right? They chose to suffer. Uh, there was one Mongolian, the brother who is staying in Mongolia, he visited us and he was telling us that um, he's not a missionary, but uh, his son, he went to the school, son went to the school, uh, the Mongolian school, right, local school, and he was beaten by these local boys, right, um, because he's Korean, right, and then um, they were thinking, the parents were thinking, the brother and sister, the mother and father were thinking, oh, we are here to preach the gospel. So if we go to the school and then report it and then, right, cause some problem, then later maybe it will be difficult to preach the gospel to the parents or in the community. So they just put up with that. They didn't do anything, even though, even though their son was beaten, right? So they are thinking always uh, in terms of the preaching the gospel. They choose to suffer. They choose. They don't have to. They don't have to. So, verse 12. Rejoice and be, how? Exceedingly glad. Exceedingly glad means, even giving a cup of cold water, Jesus remember, but if you suffer for the Lord, how much? How much? God will appreciate your suffering, actually. We cannot even imagine, right? Uh, yesterday, we had a Bible study. Every Saturday, we have a morning Bible study, right? There, our senior pastor said, okay, there are like a hundred billions of galaxies in the sky, in the universe. Hundred billion. Okay, each, each, each galaxy is, has a hundred or two hundred billion of stars. So he said, suppose this is our um, solar system. So this is the solar system. There's a sun and what is, what, what is the Mars and Earth. That's the first, what is the first thing? Venus? Mercury? Okay. Mercury, Venus, Earth. Anyway, this is the solar system. <laughs> then, our galaxy, suppose uh, our, galaxy, our solar system is this small, then our galaxy is, uh, it, it includes uh, Canada and US and Mexico. <laughs> okay? Together, put together. Okay, we think this Earth is huge, but even the galaxy, galaxy is uh, this, this big, then our, oh no, the, uh, our solar system, then our galaxy it is like uh, as huge as uh, Canada, USA, Mexico combined. That is our galaxy, one galaxy. And there are 100 billions of galaxies. So he was saying, maybe no, for each Christian, God will give one galaxy. Okay, you, keep, you get your one galaxy like that. Because there are so many galaxies, right? We'll be kings, we'll be kings. We cannot even imagine what kind of reward we will get, right? First Corinthians chapter four. First Corinthians uh, chapter two, chapter two, verse nine. Chapter two, verse nine. Let's read it together. But as it is written. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. Yes, whatever God prepared for us, we cannot even imagine. Okay. Um, the time is almost up. So one last thing. When you stand in the judgment seat of Christ, 
this will count the most. How many souls you preached the gospel to? How many souls were saved because of you? That is, that is a big question actually. You know? What did you do to save souls? How many souls would say, I'm here because of him or her? Right? Each soul is more precious than the whole world, Jesus said. So when one soul is saved, there will be rejoicing in the heaven. With all the uh, angels, they singing together, right? One soul's value is too precious, even if you are alone in this world, Jesus would come and die, right? So if you preach the gospel and one soul is saved through you or because of you, the reward will be so great, right? Let's turn to Daniel, chapter 12. Daniel, after Ezekiel, chapter 12, verse 3. Daniel, chapter 12, verse 3. Let's read it together. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. You will be shining forever and ever like the stars when you turn many to righteousness. Turning many to righteousness means preaching gospel to those people and they become righteous because of the blood of Jesus Christ. right? And you will be shining forever and ever and ever like the stars. Look at the stars. It means glory. Actually. The, the light is so bright. In the dark sky, the stars are shining. It's glory, right? You'll be like that. You'll be like that. When we enter heaven, those who got saved through you, they'll say, thank you so much. You know. In May, uh, we'll have the Bible seminar. Right? Let's remember. The reason why we are having Bible seminar is we want to have a more and more chance to preach the gospel to the lost souls. It's not, a, it's not like, a, okay, every year we should do it at least twice. It's not like that. Okay? We want to really have a chance to work together to preach the gospel so that you know, we can glorify God. We can please God. It's a good chance. In our church, we have Bible seminar so many times actually. Every month, there are here and there the Grand Bible Seminar and the Daytime Bible Seminar. There's a Bible Seminar for each district. And then there was a Bible Seminar for the youth group last time. Youth group, right? Young adult group. They are, they are having seminar of their own. Why so many seminars? Because that's a good chance, the, the best chance to preach the gospel. Right? Let's turn to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. Verse 9, Luke chapter 16, verse 9. Let's read it together. And I say to you, make a friends for yourself by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. Make a friends for yourself by unrighteous mammon. Mammon means money. Spend money. And make friends means uh, do, do your best to, to preach gospel to your friends. Then when you fail, means when you die, they may receive you into an everlasting home. They'll be waiting for you. They'll be waiting for you and they will say, well, thank you so much. They will welcome you. Right? Uh, let's turn to First Thessalonians, the last one. First Thessalonians chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 19 and 20. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19 and 20. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19 and 20. Let's read it together. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at His coming? For you are our glory and joy. You. Apostle Paul preached the gospel in Thessalonica. And he said, you are our glory and joy. 
You are our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing. You are joy and glory. And that's what will happen in the judgment seat of Christ. And suppose you are alone, no one. You never preach the gospel to anyone. You are alone. Of course, Jesus will not rebuke you, but he will just look at you in a sad way, actually, right? Um, because he has a pity in you. What you have done, you have a chance. We have a chance. We have a chance, actually, right? Um, we have uh, people working together in the workplace, or we have our family members and neighbors. There are so many people. Even there are family members who are not saved yet. We have to keep preaching the gospel. And you suffer, surely, because people will ignore you and people will speak evil of you when you try to preach the gospel. And do you remember last, I told you, the suffering also, you will receive reward. Okay? Reward. If they are saved, you will get reward for those saved souls. If you suffer or if you get persecuted, you will also get reward for your persecution. Right? If you are wise, if you are wise, you will, you will prepare for the future. Do you remember there was a one steward who was very unrighteous? He was spending money, the master's money. So the master called him, okay, you finish your job, right? And he was, uh, he was uh, helping some other people to prepare for the time after his retirement, actually. And Jesus said, he's very wise because he's preparing for the future. Even though what he did was wrong, Jesus, uh, Jesus commanded him because he was preparing for the future. So, people in this world, the unbelievers, they are always preparing for the future. The retirement, right? They are saving money, they are investing money for the future. But for Christians, that's not the preparation. Our preparation is preparing for the judgment seat of Christ, knowing that, knowing that how we will be judged, you know? What will be judged? Right? So today, I covered something about this uh, judgment seat of Christ. I think we have to remember this more and more as you know, Jesus' second coming is near, actually. Because we have to be prepared. And I don't want any of you to be ashamed in, in, when you stand before Jesus. Right? So we have to be ready. And we have to keep working waiting for the day when we will stand before Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Our gracious Father, thank you so much for giving us the Bible so that we can find out your will and your plan and everything we need to know through the Bible. Today we covered the subject of the judgment seat of Christ. And Lord, when you come with a trumpet sound, we'll be caught up in the time of rapture and we learn that we'll be standing in the judgment seat of Christ and we'll be rewarded for whatever we have done in our body according to the work we have done since salvation. So Lord, I pray for all the brothers and sisters here so that we will be remembering this judgment seat of Christ and we'll be doing our best so that when we stand before God, we'll hear from you, well done, faithful servant. So Lord, we want to have many rewards from you. And help us so that we do not waste time in this world, but we can, be, we, we can prepare for this eternal life in heaven with you. Thank you so much for this time together. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen.